Are you tired of all the dating games, rules, and societal norms that make falling in love confusing and stressful? Then join us as we ditch the script and empower you to establish healthy, conscious relationships. This weekly podcast breaks down popular dating reality television and educates you on healthy versus toxic dating habits. I'm Brianna, a licensed therapist. And I'm Alex, a trauma-informed and certified narcissist recovery coach. Are you ready to ditch the script? Hi. Uh, Hi. Uh, status check, pulse check. How are we? I'm alive. That's how my pulse <laughs> is, baby. <laughs> well, um, I'd endorse that I'm alive. I'm, I, I'm echoing that I'm alive. Um, yes. Well, I feel well in my heart. I don't think that like my body, organs, skin, digestive system are as well. Mm. Yeah. Or my voice for that matter. Let's just, let's just talk about that. I mean, you sound sexy raspy, so I'm here. Thank you. But it hurts me. (laughs) Sorry. Speak off the throat. Yeah. 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 I have to like tap into different like chambers. You probably know a lot more about this than I do, but like different chambers when I'm, when I'm like, uh, in this place. Tap into those chambers, babe. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I am this way. I just came off of a weekend seeing some friends from college for a wedding that was in Fort Lauderdale. Mazel tov. Yeah. Mazel tov. Literally it was a Jewish wedding. Mazel tov. Literally mazel tov. Love it. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And, and you know, like, it's like when you and I get together, it's just like, like guttural giggles. Yes. Like on site. And just Done. people that you see that makes you feel like you, uh, like no time has been lost, even though some people I haven't seen since like before the pandemic. Wow. But I love yeah. that. It's all yeah. time. Yeah. There was a girl that we went to school with that were like very close with this like tight knit group of that was part of this wedding. And I don't think any of them have seen each other for, since we graduated. And then when she showed up and she saw all of us, she cried. It was so sweet. Yeah. It is so sweet. I love yeah. that. Yeah. It made my heart like warm and big. Yeah. Hmm. That's awesome. So um, I'm recovering, but I'm alive and we're working on well. I'm like expecting this kombucha to like save my life. It, it's not gonna... it will a little maybe. Yeah. It'll contribute no. to it. <laughs> it's going to, it's just going to be like, hmm. There's a war zone happening down here. What's going on? Yeah. Hi. Do you need some assistance? Basically, what I'm saying is like, I'm under construction. Yeah. We're putting you back together. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're on. We're on that way. Okay. How are you? That's me. What's up with you? I'm doing great. I've had a lot of fun festivities over. I'm going out a lot more now because I am officially done with the hotel gig, working full time for myself, which is such a vibe. Um, Mm. So I've wasted no time in um, getting out there and living my best life and dating again, which is so fun. Um, And I know you've been getting all the voice notes about this experience. And I am so excited about it. Um, yeah. Can we just, I want to also like, sorry if this puts you on blast, but you were, you had texted me the other night and you were like, I'm manifesting a sloppy makeout. Yeah. It's what I'm manifesting. I it's what I see. Yeah. It's work. It, we're it didn't happen. Out. It's not yet. Yeah. 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 It, yeah not yet. In divine not timing yet. it will. <laughs> and so I'm, yeah, no, it's just, it's, it's a good time. Like I am. Yeah. I'm just really excited about it. I have lots to say, but I'm going to save it for my ready, set, swipe summer program that we will be doing. Mm. So in case anyone wants to hang out with me and learn how I date and all of my tips and tricks for being like your most magnetic, authentic self and attracting soul aligned love, then keep hanging out with me, lurk me in the DMS and, uh, we'll get you set up on the wait list. As- but as influencers say, but watch this bro, space. Watch this space. Is that what they say? I have yeah. to learn. Yeah. I'm like the anti-influencer. Yeah. Um, That's okay. 
but yeah, no, I'm, I'm really loving it. It's been such a vibe so far. So check in with me in another month and we'll see where I'm at. But so far it's been a fucking dream. <laughs> We're dating. We're literally We're dating. dating together. Look at us. I love mm-hmm. it. It's like, you know, yeah. high school summer is all over again, but way better because we're in our 30s. Oh my God. I'm rarely like single and in company with my friends while they're also single. <laughs> you and me, baby. We're in it together. Yeah, that's right. I have like a couple, two tree here and there, and we like have a lot of fun exchanging stories until it gets like a little sad and then we take care of each other. But that's yeah. what we do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Word. So, um, okay. you will get a full recap after I'm going on my first date today, everybody, <sighs> as we're recording this. So I can't you'll believe get a it. Full, full voice note recap. Super stoked. I can't it. believe it. Yeah. yeah. Wait, I have a dating story. Okay. Tell me. Yeah. So I was out. Yeah. <laughs> I was out the other night and, um, <laughs> I saved this specifically to tell you on here. Um, I was out, I was out with this guy and we were, uh, trying to get to a restaurant that didn't exist. We, he like, he was like, there's this place and it was permanently closed. And so we couldn't find it. So on the fly, we were like, let's go to Hibachi. And he's like, okay, cool. So I'm, before we get in there, I'm like, you know, I, I think that before we sit down with these strangers, we should pick a bit. Like, what's our story? Who are we? What What are our names? What's What's our relationship to each other? What is the bit? And he's like, I'm down. We get to sort of, we get to this like kind of dark and stormy place of imagining what it would be like to tell people that we're siblings that we're like brother and sister. Yeah. Yes. And, um, but then which start I told him, I said, in the middle of dinner. Yeah, exactly. No, the point, the point everybody. was to, like, yeah, that was exactly it. The point was oh, to like yeah. tell people that we were siblings he just to make them uncomfortable. The <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I told them, I was like in my head that that's so funny, but I don't want to, I don't actually want to do that in practice because I like, feel like I'll traumatize people. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like I, I live in this community. Like <laughs> I live here. So, um, I said, but in my head, like, this is amazing. So we don't do a bit. We go inside, we have dinner. It's great. On the way out, he's talking. Uh, my date is like somehow stirs up conversation with one of the guys that works there. He's like a kid. And the, the kid was so sweet. He was just like, what are you guys celebrating? Why are you here tonight? So we're celebrating my, being here. Yeah, we're just here. But my date looks at me and he goes, it's her birthday. <gasps> and I was like, yeah, it's my birthday. I'm and a Pisces. Like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> the guy was like, Oh my God, happy birthday. And then my date goes, it's my birthday too. And so I said, we're twins. Oh, and he sh- goes, this guy at the, at the restaurant without missing a beat goes, Oh my God, I love game of Thrones. That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh yeah. my God, Jamie and what's her face? Oh Jesus, that's so yeah. good. That's yeah. so good. How hysterical was that? Me, 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 and my date thought that we were like trolling him. It turns out he trolled us. He trolled us, and it yeah, broke. I love us. that. We were we we were cracking up. I couldn't I couldn't even believe what just happened. He like I don't even think that he knew that we were joking. He just like fully rolled with it. He was like, "You yeah. guys are siblings. That's great. I love Game of Thrones." Yeah. Twins did not miss up. a beat. Done. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. I love it. Uh, so that you know, and to I took your um, advice that we spoke about on the podcast last week. We Ooh. went mini golfing. Yes. We did that first. I actually went mini golfing that same week, but with a guy friend, not on a date, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. so fun. Um, I mean, I'm not, we went to the boomers out here and the inside of the boomers, I'm not going to lie. It smells like, it smells like, yeah, like literally the way I described it that night (laughs) was walking through a, like I was in a bag of popcorn butter, like literally just like smelled so nasty. And it probably was some of that too. It was dank. It wasn't a good dink. It was like nasty. It was, no, it was, it was rank. 
Yeah, it was, it was real bad. And so me and the guy I was with, Sean, he was like, we need to get outside. So we like beelined it through, <laughs> made it out. We were like holding our breath. And then we got like wow. the two hour deal only to be there for one hour and tap out. Cause we were like, we can't do any other festivities. So yeah, it was great. You're like we played mini golf and apparently amazing. I'm way better than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Like same energy. Something about the moon being in Pisces means that you're good at mini golf. Oh, slaying. Done. Yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. It's in the stars. It's in the stars. Of course. Yeah. The moon controls that, my stroke. <laughs> yeah. In more ways than one, honey. Hey. Yeah. I'm yeah. Nasty up in here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's, that's really funny for us. I, I also, I love the idea of you guys like leaving immediately and <gasps> just having them keep the two hours worth of money. Yeah. I would have told them you like, you like take this money, fix this problem. Yeah. The smell. I we want you to it. use the additional $10 I gave you for a commercial grade air freshener and also a carpet refresh. Yeah. Let's refresh Done. those carpets. Just get yeah. rid of them. Just get, you don't yeah. need concrete floor in there. It's fine. Also like, why aren't, why isn't this mini golf establishment like o open air? In I mean, the, the the mini golf section is, but to get there, you have to go through the building. So it was just like, we were sprinting. Ah, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Then I we had to use the bathroom. Story. Sean and I had to use the bathroom when we were there. And that mm -hmm. was also a terrifying experience. I just, I mean, like we air squatted obviously, but like, fuck, it was a challenge. It was like yeah, holding wow. my breath, trying to take minimal sips of air. Yeah. Squatty potting yeah. it up and yeah. it was gnarly. It was gnar. If mm. anyone lives in Palm mm. Springs, don't go to the boomers out here. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God forbid. Yeah, just to clear. Um, okay, wait, there was something that you wanted to talk about. Something that came up this weekend. Oh. Yeah, not this weekend, but earlier this week, I was at like oh. a dinner with a group of beings that are wonderful humans, and we were talking mm. about like anniversaries and relationships, because like People are getting engaged and like, you know, again, mazel tov. Yeah. So I do know. this yeah, couple. Yeah, it's literally just at one of those. Yeah. So this couple that was there was talking about how they've been together for seven years. They're, they don't want to get married though, but next year they're going to have their domestic partnership. And one of them was like, mm. yeah, you know, it's been a great seven years. I mean, of course we've had our breakups on and off, which is totally normal. Mm. And I just, mm. that was, we skirted over it real quick and I just bit my tongue mm -hmm. um, because obviously I'm not going to be like, let me pull out. What my... do you mean breakups? Yeah. Like I'm not going to go down there. But I did mm -hmm. want to like, it sat with me and, and, and it kind of irked me enough to like ponder on it, you know, percolate mm -hmm. a little on like this mm -hmm. concept of, you know, we've had our breakups, but it's normal. And I, I disagree. I think we need to get away yeah. from rom, the Hollywood and rom-coms has really fucked us up with this mentality yeah. of like breaking up equals passion. It's like, if mm. we break up and come back together, that means something, right? It me and it's like, yeah. not necessarily, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And so I like, obviously there's a spectrum. I think like you can meet the right person at the wrong time totally. And you both have growth to do. And like, if you come back together, great. But what I think has been normalized, that's super unhealthy is this, like, we fight, we break up, we get back together. We fight, we break up, we get back together on repeat. And that is not healthy. It should not be normalized. And if you're in a situation like that, I encourage you to start taking a gander at like, why do you keep going back into a relationship that blows up every time confrontation happens? Um, so yeah. that's what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. What's so interesting about how it was, it sounds like it was said, like how the breakups were mentioned. It got, it's, there was it an awkward air like, after. Oh yeah, totally. Of course. It's like, ah. um, well, it sounds like it was like almost used as a pseudonym for fights where it's yeah. like, of course we've had our fights. Like that would have made, that would have made more sense yeah. to me, you know? Yes. And I think sometimes like breakups aren't, shouldn't just be a part of fighting. And, no. but I do think for some folks, breakups are often a part of fighting. Yeah. Where it's like, you get into a fight, you break up. They're like, they broke up with me. 
And then you like, and here's the thing. If that's what's happening, you're not actually breaking up. You're just using weaponized language in your yeah. breakup. I'm sorry, that's in right. your fights that communicates breakup, which is actually just incredibly, um, it's like, it's pretty, it's like aggressive. It's very for aggressive. It, and it's like, what, I don't know what the word that I'm looking for is, but to describe how it makes someone feel, but you just, you, it's hard to know where you stand with someone, but also it's, it's like threatening the breakup that cried wolf. Yeah. It's right. Yeah. It's the breakup that cried wolf. Yes, exactly. And so here's the deal. It's like, if we get in conflict and we, you have a partner or a dynamic in your relationship where like conflict arises. And one of the first things you say is like, well, then why are we together? Maybe we should break up then. It's like, first of all, I, I really want to like shout from the rooftops that fighting is normal. Like <clears throat> it's impossible yeah. to be in a, it's, like in any kind of relationship, because at first I was going to say monogamous, but like, screw it, polyamorous too, right? It's impossible to be in any kind of relationship where there's no fighting. And I think a lot of yeah. people have this belief system where fighting equals bad, fighting equals toxic, fighting equals we need to break up. And so that's why we have this like knee jerk reaction. And again, I blame Hollywood and these like idealistic standards that aren't real at all, not grounded in reality at all. But the truth mm -hmm. is, is that two imperfect beings coming together, trying to establish romance and, and camaraderie mm -hmm. and, and companionship, there's going to be a time where we ruffle each other's feathers. And that doesn't mean we need to break up. It means we need to come together, be mature ass adults and be like, here's how that made me feel. Here's what I would prefer. How are you feeling? What do you need from me in those times? Okay, noted. Let's keep growing together. Not a, you piss me off. And if you piss me off again, I'm leaving. I don't want to be in a relationship. Like, that is not safety. That is not emotional safety. In some cases, is not physical safety. And all it leads the person, the other person in the relationship, if you're hearing that threat regularly, is you're on right. edge. You're in a state of anxiety because you don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know where the person stands, you know, where you stand with the person. And you now are being conditioned to, I need to keep you happy so that you don't leave me, which is not yeah. healthy in the slightest. Not so that's why I was like, I, I had that thought. I caught myself thinking about it a day later. And I was like, we should really address this because it is something that yeah. I think a lot of people have normalized. And they're like, yeah, we've been on and off for eight years. And it's like, whoa, what? Let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On and off for eight years without the the following statement, whether, I mean, if this is just a part of your relationship and you're not just explaining it, that's fine. You don't owe, you don't owe other people outside of your relationship an explanation of where you are in your journey. Mm -hmm. But the proverbial knowing if what doesn't come after the on and off eight year breakups has is, and we've figured our stuff out and we've made changes and we're in a very secure place and we've figured out how to not do this with each other going forward, like then this isn't headed towards a positive place. And yeah. it's probably like, it, sometimes I just want people to ask themselves, if you were listening to your friend or your sibling or just someone that you really care anybody. about talking about, yeah, anybody, anybody that you care about talking about them like being on and off, on and off. This person broke up with me and then I broke up with him and then they broke blah, 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 blah. Would you want that for your person? Would you want that for the person that you care about? You wouldn't. So can you ask yourself why you feel comfortable allowing that to be your story? Yeah. And that's where it usually comes back to self-worth, a self-worth issue. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, just interesting food for thought. And Shall we head back to the mansion or no, we're on hometowns, bitch. We're going to Vermont. No, we're going to cross them. Yeah. We're going to Vermont. We're going to Georgia. We're going, we're going to, to Austin, Austin Texas. Texas. We're going to New York, New York city, baby. Hey, let's go. I'm ready to go on hey. this adventure with you. Yeah. Let's go traveling. Okay. So Gabby's hometown, Vermont. I just My girl. love her to bits. Me too. We got to have her on the show. I'm, I'm going to slide into her DMs and be like, girl, I know this might sound weird, but. <laughs> I think that we're soul siblings. 
Yeah, we have this podcast and you can listen to the episodes here and um, we'd love to chit chat with you. Anyway, I think I might yeah. do it. Yeah, I think you should. I I just think that she's adorable. I, I love that they they had such a, so they go to Vermont. He She like immediately takes him to learn how to like tap trees to extract yeah. maple, which yeah. I thought was um, educational and adorable. I love this kind of date, by the way. I love maple syrup. I only get grade A maple. There's all different kinds. There's you amber. Do. Oh my God. Yeah. And it's pure maple syrup is so different than like Aunt Jemima maple syrup. It's like totally or log cabin or any of that. It's as Gabby different. would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So continue. Maple syrup so, tasting. It just was like cute. It, it, you could tell that this is, you, you ever been on a date and it just like, you could be in the supermarket and like mm -hmm. having a blasty blast and Always. you're just like running around But like, you can't, you don't feel that way with every person in a supermarket, no. right? No, I feel but, that um, way with me like, in a supermarket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel that way by myself in a supermarket. I, there's just like, sometimes you can be on a date with someone, you could be doing absolutely anything and it's going to be like giggle fest. Everything's yeah. like silly. They're like making innuendos about putting their fingers in the tree. Like I, I, I just, I love dying. dying. I was like, we are getting real inappropriate here in the best way possible. And it's also a sign that like their sexual antennas are alive for each other. For each other. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. It's like, fuck you guys. Need like, to like, call, like, like call it immature humor. Fine. Like, go fuck yourself. But I don't know. It's, yeah, like, come on. It's a sex joke. Yeah, grow up. Grow up. Oh, yeah. yeah, if you grow feel up. about sex, then how good is your sex life? That's my thing. Jesus. It just, it just means that they're, like, perked up and they're ready to go and they're, they're tuning in towards each other. But it's also in this, like, slow and uh, playful, safe, totally. flirty way that has, like, no pressure. I really am sad about this actually happening on The Bachelor because it means that Gabby will either be a person that he's with or she won't. And this beautiful connection will never, I want this connection to happen in the real world without all of this fucking television pressure. Yeah. Yeah. That bums me out. <laughs> hmm. How come? Just because you don't think it's possible? Because I, because I can see that he also, okay, cutting to the chase a little bit, we'll obviously get into the other dates, but I feel that Zach has such a strong connection with Katie that yeah. I, I just, I know that they're really close and I really love their connection as well. So for me, Same. for me, it's between those two connections. Same. Um, and I'm really sad that not like both of these connections aren't going to get the chance to just grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they're, they're such good examples of beautiful, yeah. like appropriately building. Like I, I really like actually believe I, I ha sometimes have a hard time believing the, the, the sauce between the bachelor or bachelor and their like final contestants. And with these two, I really fucking feel it, but in different ways, yeah. it could be really healthy. Yeah, yeah, totally. We there, and it's funny to me too. Cause like hearkening back to last week's episode where we were talking about, um, Gabby and Katie in the bath at the end, like these two girls are besties and I mm -hmm. really believe they will be the final two in the end. And yeah, I'm so excited to see what happens over fantasy suites. Cause they are hyping it up, but they tend to hype it up worse than it actually is. So I'm, I'm just yeah. interested to see, but I love them for who they are, despite their, like, even though they're so different, these two women. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I feel for Zach because at this point it must be really challenging to compartmentalize the relationships. Um, yeah. and I agree with you that it's like in one timeline in this universe, he could pick Gabby and it'll be one way and another timeline in another universe, he could pick Katie and it'll be that way. And so exactly. I'm just fascinated to see. I'm just fascinated to see. What did yeah. you think of um, how Gabby was feeling while Zach was on his way out? Because she was acknowledging, you know, I'm the first, I'm the first hometown. Like, it's going to be a really long time till, till I see you. Like, I'm just, she's like, I'm nervous. She's like, I'm confident in us. 
but I'm also like, I'm sad and I'm nervous. I loved it. And I thought the way that Zach responded was great. And I thought it was the most emotionally mature thing she could do. I think too often, especially women are like, I mean, everyone's told to like, play it cool. Don't act too interested. Don't act too like that. You're too involved emotionally. Right. Yeah. And at this point, yeah. like, I love that Gabby's honoring how she's feeling instead of trying to be like, I'm the first one. I set the bar high and like, have a great rest of your week. And I'm so confident. I'm not worried. It's like, if that's not genuinely how you're feeling, it's kind of like what we were saying with Kat's downfall. Like that vibe is going to be picked up. Like you need to rip the bandaid up and be bandaid off and be honest. And so Gabby being like, Oh my God, I was the first one. And I'm nervous. You're going to forget about me. And like, you know, she literally said like, don't forget about me when you go on your other dates. And I think she did a really good balance of like, honoring her feelings, allowing herself to hold space, allowing herself to be comforted, and then switching gears and being like, let's kiss. I love you. Have a great time, but not too great. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. it was, I loved it. What about you? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, 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 the skeptic in me in, in regarding Zach, I, I think in my, I think, and this is, I have to acknowledge this in my head, Zach's not actually going to pick Gabby mm. in my head. So when he's telling her like, it's okay, like we're going to be fine. It just felt a little gaslighty to me, but of oh. course I can't actually put that on him right? because I don't know what his, where his thoughts are at in, in this time of the process, but it just yeah. felt like, don't worry. Like we're, it, you're, you're fine. Just trust in us. Just, it was, it was sort of like, it was a little triggering. Just trust in us. Just trust in us. I was like, la, 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 la. there was something about it that I didn't like. But again, I think it's just like me making my own assumptions about what's about to happen, not knowing anything, not listening to spoilers, not like, you know what I mean? Same. I think that I totally hear you and I completely agree how it can come across that way. And I also yeah. think that Zach is true. Zach is staying true to who he is in the moment that is arising. Yeah. And so- yeah. And I think that's all he really can do. So in that moment, he's like, I'm into you. Like, we're here. Like, trust in us, which is true. But then as yeah. he says in another clip to a parent, it's like, I, one night can change everything. And so... Yeah, which he probably shouldn't have said to that parent. I mean, but it's the truth. And so it's like... But it is true. What do we do? Like, do we tell the truth or do we tell people what they want to hear? And so it's like... Totally, totally, totally. I think, it's a lose-lose. I think it's... It's yeah, it really is in his situation. And so, you know, for Gabby, that moment of co like consoling was great. That's what she desired. It's what he provided yeah. for her. But I True. think there is very much a part of her that knows logically like, yeah, you're going to tell me that now. And she knows how much can change. Look at what happened with them. Their relationship changed in a day. Like we totally. thought she was going to go home at one point because of her nervous breakdown in the early days. And then look, they had a one -on -one, totally. and it's like, oh my God, she's a front runner. Off to the races. Yeah. So, you know, like totally. he's, doing, he's I, doing the best he can with what he has in the moment. I also think that if this were me in Zach's position, I would be getting so much shit for probably doing the same thing because if I'm going to be totally honest, if I know something about myself, it's that whoever I'm in front of, I'm in love with. I'm like, I love you. Cause I'm like, I'm connected. We're like, I'm okay. engaged. I'm like, I see you. And I'm like, I am like, I love you. No, 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 no. And then, yeah. And then I could be in front of someone else and be like, I love you because I like feel it. Cause why I can't be on this show because I feel it. And then, and then I'd be in trouble because I'd be like, they'd be like, you told this other person that you love them. I was like, yeah, of course I did. Cause I do, but I also love you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so that yeah, begs let me the give question, him grace. bachelorette or bachelor in paradise. Always bachelor in paradise. Bach bachelor, me too. Be, be a contestant on bachelor so that I can have enough of an, uh, enough airtime for an audience to be invested in me a little so that I can be endorsed for BIP word yeah i just think like vip is such a n more natural place or love island is such a net more natural place to like <laughs> check the vibes but then it Which feels riskier because you're like more options but then also more options for me so you know I don't yeah know. it's just like not everyone's like figurative claws are out 
even for the men. Yeah. Like everyone, it's just, it's just a little too, like in, in the, the proper bachelor, bachelorette shows, it's just too rare. Mm, true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Big rare. All right. You do it. You have a man, you have a manicure. You do the rare, rare. 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 Yeah. You guys like my French <laughs> tip? <laughs> yeah. She's dark. Right. She's a dark soul. Yeah. I thought of you Metal. today. I was like, is this some witchy shit that I'm doing? <laughs> it is. It is witchy, but it's also I like, it. it's also like a little posh. Yeah. It's posh witchy. Yeah. There you go. Oh my God. That's kind is of, is there a why. witchy spice? <laughs> you are the witchy spice. Witchy yeah. spice. We're making our well, own okay. spice girls. So yes. with some of my friends, we, we, we assign DJ names. Oh, to each other. DJ names sort of like like your party person like persona, but you you can't just like pick a DJ name. It has to find you. I understand this completely. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, I feel like we just found your DJ name and it's DJ Witchy Spice. DJ Witchy Spice, baby. I'll okay. take it. I'm putting it on the list. I also have a list of all of the DJ names because the, the the joke of this of this DJ name hunt is that I don't have one and I'll never have one. I just have a long list in my phone of ideas. Your name yeah. hasn't found you yet. No, no. And honestly, at this rate, like it shouldn't find me because because and so Jess yeah, and like I will literally me. we'll just yeah we'll we'll just say so like we'll be talking and then we'll be like oh my god DJ Sour D and then we'll always say I think that's it. I think that's it, but it's never it. It's never it. But for other people, it's like, it just happens. It feels right. It's organic. true. Yes. It's organic. Like yours is DJ Witchy Spice. Okay. I'm writing it down. DJ Witchy okay. Spice. I love that for me. Great. Thank you. I really yeah. love it for you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, well, do you have anything else on Gabby and her cutie fam? I just love you, Gabby. I love how close her family is. And I love, she talks like me. Like when she was talking to her sister, I'm like, yeah, this is the vibe. Like, this is great. He, so. You guys are literally the same in, in the best way. I don't mean in like a monolith way, no. but in no, like I get the best mean. way. I'm not offended by it at all. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's dope as fuck. Yeah. We'd be friends yeah. in our I just want to like hang out with her. Me too. Um, Let's go to Vermont. <laughs> Let's go to, well, I don't really want to go to Vermont, but like she, maybe she can come to us. Totally. She can come to Cali. Girl, come, or Florida. Come, yeah. Come to the beach, be in one of these beaches and like call us. Yeah. Done. DM us. Okay. We're so um, we are, we're really cute. <laughs> so, so then we go to, yeah. Hilarious. We're just the best. Yeah. 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 Um, we're going to <laughs> that's my... in New York. New York City. I get, I get that to feeling meet the that Russian community, Loshka. Yeah, that's the only right. Russian word I can say. It's more than I know. It's, it seems to Ten me months, that this is. Does it mean Russian? No. Roshka? Loshka. 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 What does it mean? Lover. Spoon. <laughs> <laughs> That's Yo. <laughs> I lost my virginity. Loshka. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. anyone anyone who lost their virginity to me lost it to a Russian. So, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that's so funny. Okay. Right, so, I, I get the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got to keep going. I get the feeling that Zach, this is his first time in New York City. Otherwise, he was just like playing stupid. I know. It was funny. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what that was about. Yeah. Maybe he's not well-traveled until Bachelor, which is understandable. Yeah, like, I am not well-traveled. And Texas is a big state. Texas Hard to is leave so it. huge. It's like 400-something miles across. I had to drive through that bitch, and it took a long time. And it was also where I Gnarly. saw my first tumbleweed. <laughs> tumbleweed. There's a lot yeah. in your area, isn't there? Tumbleweeds. Yeah, out here, yes, 100. But before I arrived in Palm Springs and I was driving through Texas to get here, I saw a tumbleweed. The end. Such and you a were great like, story. I thought that only lived in Cartoon World. It's yeah, weird. this is RL. Yeah. yeah. Um. So Texas <laughs> is huge. Uh, maybe Zach. I mean, he's from Anaheim, so we know he's been to those two states. Oh, but he currently Isn't lives he? in Austin. 
He's Correct. he lives in Austin, Texas. But I think he's from Anaheim. But I, I thought might his be family wrong. was like No, I'm you know, no, you might be right Yeah. I, I and I'll I'll vamp while you do that, but I, I'll tell you why I think that you're right is because while they were still at the mansion. Yeah. Wow, that was a perfect. <laughs> he was raised nearby in Anaheim Hills. This also explains why he went to the Ducks game, which and that's right, that's right for one. Yeah. And the the first no hometown, the first one on one date that he took Christina on, he had her meet the family. They were already right in California. Door. They obviously went to Anaheim. Da 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 da. Um, but he lives in Austin, Texas now. Yeah, Interesting. we're catching up. And all of you who are watching the show and you're like, you two bitches are behind. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, listen, accept us for our fatal flaws and move on. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we're in New York. Ariel's showing him around. She warns him of her brother. And oh my God, her brother. I'm glad I'm glad she did. And she so and and she also warned him of kind of like the dad and uh, like not in a they're scary but they're protective they love me like it's there's a reason why they are this way with me they're very protective um they've come from since she mentioned that her parents or her she's she's a first generation uh first generation american her parents immigrated from russia they are refugees like they are are they refugees i don't know scrap that <laughs> might be i don't know what i'm talking about they immigrated here and therefore they are like the life that we've created here is to give to our children which is very familiar to a, like a first yeah. generation immigrant story and really? if you know you know and they're like so our children and the life that we created for them they're everything mm-hmm. so yeah. don't fuck this up for real that's that's the message essentially Basically, I thought her brother was scarier than her father, and he was. And I, I, if I'm being honest, I felt a little bit was a little postury. It was kind of rude and condescending. Not, it didn't feel like it was really coming from the place he was claiming it was coming from. Um, yeah. And so that's my personal opinion on him, and I stand behind it. And if you disagree with me, I still respect you for your opinion. But <laughs> I. Mm-hmm. I understood where he was at first with like, you know, why Ariel should pick him. I think that's a valid question, you know? Um, And then I uh, totally understand him asking, do you really believe it's possible to fall in love that quickly? Totally. But then when he starts to be like, you know, we come from different backgrounds. How are you going to deal with that? And what's her birthday? Do you even know her birthday? Then I was like, all right, now you're like, just kind of poking the bear. Like, yeah, I'm having test anxiety. Just yeah. listening to it. I felt for Zach in that moment. I was like, poor dude. I mean, he handled it as best as he could. Yeah. Um, but, and I also love that Zach validated his skepticism. He was like, you'd be crazy not to be skeptical. Like I get it. Um, yeah. Points for Zach there. Um, yeah. do that more for your women. And I, yeah. it, <laughs> I am just like, I didn't like it. And I, yeah, yeah, I was, I was grossed out by it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it felt a little bit like, like a classic trope of yeah. older brother, like don't talk to my sister. If like verbal talk to shotgun. Her. Yeah. <laughs> just like, it was a lot. Um, yeah. but I love how. Ariel held it, handled it. I also love that she like clapped back at him. She was like, she was just mocking him because he's like, what, something about this guy. And she was like, he has a name. This guy. What do you mean this guy? Yeah. He has a name. Seriously. Um, I did understand her dad's concern. He was just like, it, what he said to Zach, he's like, this could change in an evening. Um, and like, I, how do you expect me to give you my full endorsement stranger man that i just met when i know that this could be different like Absolutely. you could yeah. you're either going to follow through on this promise that you're making or i'm like or i'm going to be really disappointed and then having to care for my daughter emotionally so i understand i thought that i thought that ariel's ariel's dad was like the most honest in like the more dark the darker side of this process you know i agree i thought that i thought that some of the other parents were 
quite honest as well, but they just, you know, it's like rose colored. Like we love to see our child in love. And I can imagine that that feels like a really happy thing and makes you feel like, yeah. go for it, sweetie. You know, <laughs> whereas he's like, don't go for it. You know? Yeah. I totally understand. I think that what he shared, he's like, how do you expect me to give my full endorsement when I know there's three other women still around? And I totally understand that. And I don't blame him for it one bit. And if I was Zach, that's what I would have said. I would have been like, yeah, mm -hmm. honestly, I get that. And I don't need that right mm -hmm. now. Like, mm -hmm. I want you to meet me. I want to get to know you. I want to know, get to know your family and how you guys be so I can make a decision if it's in alignment with what I want for my life. Um, but I don't need your full endorsement right now. It's not what I'm asking for because I totally yeah. get that if your kid and you want the best for her, you know, like, yeah. honestly, like I, I respected him for what he said to Zach and I don't blame him one bit for feeling the way he felt. I felt that he did a really good job of explaining where he was at over the brother. I think the brother was using that concern energy and getting a tacky with it instead of like, look, let me just be upfront with you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, All right. Okay. So charity. then they make out. Oh, Charity. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. They make out. They leave. Um, charity. And we are in Columbus, Georgia, where Zach meets Charity's family. I love Charity's brother. Yeah. I love Charity's so brother. so great. He's so, he's yeah. like her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah. They seem like besties. They do. Uh, and so emotionally intelligent. I love it. Yeah. 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 It made sense why she is the way that she is. Like, what a, what a like lovely, like, I wanted to roll up to that, like, outdoor family picnic yeah. shindig. I love that she had her friends so there. This reminded me of something that you and I would do. I feel mm. like I feel straight like off the family and the friends. Like, if yeah. I went on a show like this, I 100% would be like, you got to meet my people, you know, 100%. they need to read mm -hmm. on you. Um, yeah. and so, yep. yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Get it, girl. I, I, uh, I, I think that the biggest takeaway for me, the thing that I noticed the most in Charity's hometown was the family was and, and friends, everyone is keenly aware of uh, really validating what Charity has also shared about her last relationship and how um, disruptive that was to her and her mental yeah. health. I think, I think what was beautiful is that while everyone was sort of on the same page of like, we are nervous about Charity getting hurt again, to which I understand, but I also want people to kind of check in that like, being hurt by different people, different situations may lead to different experiences of hurt. Whereas when you're like hurt from a toxic relationship and a manipulative dynamic, totally you are, different. yeah, you've got a lot of, you're starting from a, a, a low place. Deficit. When you're, when you're, and well, when that happens, you could be hurt by someone who's a healthier person and be triggered and be brought to a right. similar place. Right. And I want to leave space for that to be incredibly valid because it is. And I also know that being hurt through different, different outcomes through different healthier dynamics may mean different kinds of hurt, a more manageable hurt, still hurt. It's still painful, but one that you can like, take care of yourself through in a different yeah. way than you could the other. Yeah. If that makes sense. It does. I actually just had this same talk with a client the other day. She was like, what mm. is harder, a breakup from a toxic relationship or a breakup from a healthy relationship? And I was like, toxic, easy. And she was like, easy. why do you think that? I thought the heartbreak from the healthy relationship would be more painful. And I'm like, it's the heartbreak is the heartbreak. But when you're in a toxic relationship, you're consumed by it because of the abuse and mistreatment that goes on and it becomes your world. And so a yeah. lot of times when we're truly talking about toxic relationships, it's because you are like, I can't be happy if they aren't happy. You're in this people pleaser, giving at the expense of yourself, you know, filtering who you are, filtering your words and needs and emotions and all of these things in order to keep the relationship as stable as possible, which is 
you know, self-abandonment times 10. And so when you leave an unhealthy relationship, you're leaving feeling hollow in, you know, uh, within yourself because of all of that pain that you've been harboring, you know, under the radar the entire time of that unhealthy relationship. Whereas with a healthy relationship, yes, you're, you're mourning the breakup and you're grieving that, but when you have a good relationship with self, you're like, yes, this hurts. And I know I'm going to be okay. Yes. This wasn't the person for me, even though I wanted it to be. And that's okay. That means there's someone out there that's better for me. So there's healing from a healthy relationship. Breakup is much easier of a process than going through. Like I've had trauma and now I'm like coming up for air, trying to figure out which way is up, you know? Absolutely. A hundred percent. So oh, I agree with I, that. the other, the other takeaway felt sort of like cha- at least I, I was grateful to see that people got to a place where they were just excited to see that charity could access hope and, um, yeah, yeah hopefulness for the future with this person. I think if you are a person who loves someone who's been through something similar to what charity has, the, the watching of them fall in love again, even if they comes with the risk of heartbreak. I don't, I want to encourage you to like hang on to that fear that you have of, oh no, this is going to be so bad. They're so happy right now and keep that to yourself. And if you can, because what this means is that she's really moving through a healing process as well, yeah. especially if this is not just because of an attachment to another person. Right. When it's, she's done her own work, which girl, I know charity has. You I can see it in the way she be. You see it in the in way, the she, way be. she freaking be when you, when someone has done that work and then they go take a risk on falling in love and connecting with someone and you see that they're happy and that they're grounded in that, be mm-hmm. happy for them. It doesn't matter what happens next. They'll, we're well, going to figure it out as a community will. and as she, as Friend an individual. Group. Yes. Yeah. Done. That's um, the sermon. Yeah. I loved it. I loved their little date after and she owned that she was falling in love with him, which I was really proud of her for. Cause I know that can be hard as God damn, especially in this situation. Um, and so they end on a high note and then we <laughs> are off to Austin now. Austin. Texas. Yeah. We're off to Austin. Okay. Another date that I loved. I am obsessed. Me too. I am obsessed with the fact that Katie had her, first of all, I love that they like went to her new place that she just moved Mm -hmm. into. It was like in the process of moving into while the show was starting to air. I am obsessed that she was like, we're going to the grocery store. I have nothing. Um, We're going to my house. I need help building my furniture. And now I don't know if they actually ended up building the furniture because like the producers are there. Like, what are they going to do? Literally spin around with that little Ikea tool. Yeah. Screwing nuts and bolts. No, they probably did that for five minutes and like kept it moving. But I, I just, I love the idea of that. It's so regular. It's so common folk. It's so peasant life. But it's, that's that's why it's so great is because it's relatable. It's like, I remember a couple years ago on uh, Chris Soul's season of Bachelor, he took one of his dates to Costco and I'm like, yes. Like, yeah. Oh my God. Yes. Costco gate. Yes. Costco date. Yeah. And so it's like to see, because think about it, like these girls and Zach have gone off to these like extravagant places, this wonderful romance story. But again, it hasn't been rooted in reality. And so to see how someone is when they're just like going to the grocery store, picking stuff out to eat, like what Katie said, like what flavor of gluten-free cereal are you going to pick? And I love that because he was like, well, cinnamon. And she's like, great, cool. We we're going to get along fine because It's true. Like if you're buying groceries for two people, you're going to learn these things about each other. And I think that there's beauty in the simple things in life and just getting to know someone in their day-to-day situation. It doesn't all need to be red carpet, fancy fucking dinners. Like, come on. (sighs) Not for me. The skin has got to breathe. I mean, I love that, but... Me too, but like once in a blue moon. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, for real. Um, and also like way a, a much, I love, this is why I love hometowns and like this part of the process because the show, they have these extravagant fucking dates and it's just sort of like, is this even a real connection? If we are just supported by a lavish environment 
Yeah, I know. You know, I'll fall in love so, with anybody in Budapest at a spa. Are you fucking kidding me? Could be. Are you I could kidding be swimming me? with an ogre and be like, "Yeah, you're hot. Let's go. You're taking me here." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. I, I, I've absolutely like fallen in love on vacations and trips, and like been like, "Wow, I love you," because yeah. of where we are and what we're doing. It's, yeah, it, it's. It's biological, okay? Yeah. Falling in love on vacation. So (laughs) then then Katie brings Zach to meet her family. And what we learned, I mean, we already knew that Katie's dad is on the picture. And because of what Katie's mom has gone through with just like the relationships in her own life, Katie describes that the outcome is her, her brother, and her mom are just a very, very tight unit. And it's so true. And they're so close. And it's so sweet. They yeah. love hard. And and even like her aunties, like whatever, whoever else was part of that little community in her mom's house just felt like they are really, really, um, they ride for each other. Uh, and re- it seemed like grounded people, like real down to earth folks. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. That whole family seems really put together after what they've been through. Um, because that's really it. Like when people go through traumatic things like that, there's really only two ways to respond. It gets worse or it gets better. And they've done a really good job of it getting better, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and so what I thought was really fascinating was how quick her mom was to notice Mm -hmm. the difference in Katie's body language with Zach. She picked up on that immediately. She was like, Oh my God, they're all over each other. I've never seen that side of my daughter. She's like, I like it, but I'm sure it also makes her feel I mean, she admitted it made her feel anxious because you're sitting there watching her be like more vulnerable, more connected with someone. And you know yeah. that there's three other people still around. Um, and so, totally. you know, she ends up, of course, chatting with Zach and uh, she likes him. Everything's great there. Um, and then Katie starts talking. Was it her sister? No, it's her Who's aunt. the other chick? The aunt. It's not. Yeah. Yeah about what she's been going through with Zach and she has some emotions come up here just because of like what she's been through with men in her life consistently. Um, yeah. and I'm curious to know if she's shared those. I mean, I, we've seen a little bit come up with Zach, but I wonder if she's really shared the depth um, of with, I, with I'll she. say, I, 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 I would say that I doubt it. And the reason why I feel that way is because, and this is, Please note, this is me putting myself in the position. Right. So I don't know her thought process. But I, why I probably wouldn't have said all of that so much so soon is like, it's, and I'm I'm not saying that this is the healthiest thing to do, but it makes sense in my brain where it's like, I'm so vulnerable and so like tender about the fact that I am, uh, I have a strong sensitivity to being abandoned by men. Like- mm. I, my narrative and my experiences have been men disappointing, leaving me and like letting me down time and time again. I've never been held uh, emotionally by a man and, and been secure in that relationship and secure that they would stick around. It's hard to tell someone in the process of the bachelor because like being left and also while you're actively dating other people is so, so real. Totally. Not that, be, not that those things can't be real in in a more t- pedestrian way of dating, but I just feel like how I guess I would say how are you going to tell someone I'm I, I'm I'm so open to you and it makes me so nervous because of I've never actually been I've never been able to be secure with any man in my life romantically or familiarly how do you say that to someone that like truly might not pick you because it's a game? I think it depends on the intention with which you're sharing it. Like, I think just sharing it for the sake of like, look, let's be humans together. How, and like, she could, she could ask him, how are you doing with being the bachelor? I want to ask him that question. I would be, if I was on this show, I would ask it because I can't imagine it being easy. So I'd be like, let's be humans for a minute. Like, how are you doing? There's a lot of really great women here. Like, how are you feeling? Like, it's a lot to compartmentalize. Like, how is that been for you? And then, you know, 
when he's done sharing, I would be like, for me, it's been really great to feel a sense of security with you. And I'm really appreciative that you've established that with me, because if I'm being really honest in my past, this is what I've experienced and she can share all of that. And then just be like, so I really appreciate that. Although you can't guarantee me security, I'm experiencing that with you. And that's a beautiful thing yeah. for me to get the opportunity yeah. to experience and just leave yeah. it at that. Mm -hmm. Like, I think if we, if she shares it from a place of, I need you to guarantee you're going to pick me, that's where it gets icky, you know? And yeah. I've seen that a lot on this show where women will share, like, I've always been left in my life and I just need to know that you're not going to leave me. Like if that was the case, he can't, answer honestly then i know well that's that's why i that's why i and i totally agree with you that's why i was like oh this is probably why she's hesitant to do this because she probably doesn't want to put him in the position to say to make a promise that he can't keep you know right yeah but you know as what long I thought as of? that's conscious yeah yeah what i thought of is um it would be it, it would have been amazing i doubt that this has happened <laughs> And if it did happen, it certainly wasn't aired. It would be amazing <sighs> if Zach asked Katie, like, hey, as I've gotten to know a little 100%. bit about, like, yeah, yes. this stuff about the men in your life, like, what's this like for you? For real. Yeah. That would be a really sexy question to be asked. Sexy. So sexy. Sexy. Foreplay. Fuck yeah. That's a panty dropper. You want to hear how yeah, I'm is, doing because you know about my past experience and you give a shit to even ask. Mm. Come here, baby. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, we have to stop talking about it because things are happening. You get a little horny. Okay. Yeah. Have a little, a little fanny flutter over there. What did we, what did we say offline before we were saying, uh, spiritual titillation? Yeah, something like that's that. like that was like emotional <laughs> titillation for me. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay, so okay, okay, okay. Let's keep it moving. So, um, <laughs> I'm so flustered. <laughs> okay, so then we have, yeah, yeah. Then we have, then we have the rose ceremony. Yes, rose ceremony. I'm just gonna cut to the chase to to ex express a feeling. Okay, go express it. Charity goes home, and I that absolutely surprised me. I was I thought certain. Ariel was going to go home. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Certain of it. I was like, Same. and he called her first. Charity. And then I was like, well, there goes charity. Yeah. Um, I'm not he sure what that her was about first. I know. I couldn't believe he called her first. That was like the biggest mic drop we've had all season. It was like, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought for sure. And, and, and it's so funny because when this rose ceremony got started, I was, I was like, oh my God. Like, cause I really just felt like charity was going to be tippy, 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 tippy top at some point. Not like, I didn't think that he was going to choose her. I just thought that she was going to go to fantasy suites because of their connection because mm. of their, and even their hometown. Like I was just their like, their hometown was cute. If, can I be really yeah. honest there? Yeah. I think. Zach is more sexually attracted to Ariel and that's why he kept her. Yeah, I agree. Because I see more of an emotional connection with charity. I charity. think there's a lot more developed there, but I think this is an excellent observation of a guy thinking with his head downstairs. And I get it. I get it. But I really mm -hmm. do think that that is where that decision came through is like, it's fantasy, not saying that he's going to fuck air. I mean, maybe clearly they're hinting at some shit going down, but I think he, I think he fucks Ariel at, at the fantasy suites. I think, okay. Can I tell you a prediction I have? Tell me your prediction. You know, they're teasing Let's everything. Go. I think that they, I think that he makes the, he, I, he's like, people shouldn't do this. Don't speak on the commitments that you expect to make for yourself because then you're going to have to double back. He's like, I'm not having sex during fantasy suites, blah, blah, blah. He's going to tell all of the girls we're not having sex during fantasy suites. He's going to fuck Ariel. Ariel. He's going to fuck her. And then he's going to have to go tell Katie and Gabby yeah. I had sex uh, with, with Ariel during my fantasy suite. I'm so sorry. This all tracks because Ariel's the only one I think we didn't see crying in the previews. Um, mm -hmm. So that tracks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I don't yeah. think he, I don't think he's going to pick her for engagement. And if he does, if she is the one standing in the end, 
I don't think it will last. I, what I have seen, I have seen bare bones, like minimal emotional connection and vulnerability with them. And I, cause we've, Ariel's admitted, like, I have a lot of walls up. It's hard for her to connect in that way. But like, I've seen him have good conversations with Gabby. I've seen him have good conversations with Katie. I've seen him have wonderful conversations with Charity. And so when I see Charity go home over Ariel, my mind goes to what is this really about here? And that is the only thing that I personally can witness through this highly edited lens of this reality TV show. Yeah. You are yeah. speaking straight factuals. Do you know that? Facts, facts, facts. Thanks, homie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All so right. So by charity, here's what I didn't like about the charity being sent home. Can we talk about it? I didn't know. Oh, like please. This. Yeah, yeah, Zach yeah. said the same line he said to Brooklyn. He said, yeah, he you recycled. deserve all the love that I could. And I'm just like, can you say something else? Because now that line just doesn't feel genuine. I and fully agree. I felt the same I'm like, thing. bro, especially because like, I think with Brooklyn, it tracked. It was like, it made sense. I wanted to click. It wasn't clicking. And he really meant like, you deserve the stuff that I can't give it to you. I want to give it to you, but I'm just not there. And it's, it's not happening. I completely believe him when he said it to her. I think with yeah. charity, he didn't, he felt too ashamed to own up to why he was letting her go home. And so he just leaned on that because it makes like, think about it. Like it makes the girl feel like special. You know what I mean? Like when he says like, you deserve the love I can't give you, you're putting it on her. Like you deserve more, you deserve the world, which is true, but it leaves no room for her to argue. Right. And yeah. so I felt that he leaned on that as a way to like minimize charity's questioning. Not, and I don't think this was malicious or conscious at all. I think this was just his way of being in that moment. Um, and so he took the, that road out, but then it leaves charity. As you see, she's like, what the fuck does that even mean? Because I think for yeah. her, she could feel like it didn't feel like a genuine answer. Um, yeah. I think the genuine answer is what I said. He was, but he, that's scary to tell someone, you know? Yeah. How do you? Yeah. How, but don't, yeah. I mean, like, I just would have like, say like, I'm following my heart to say anything, but don't, don't put yeah. it on her. If it's not, you know, don't say uh -huh. that to her. If it's, you're not genuinely it just, meaning it. Yeah. You know, it's giving it's, and I totally agree with you with Brooklyn. It felt, it felt rooted in truth. And with charity, it's giving like, you're too good for me. Yeah. Well, fuck. She is. She's a, dime piece and it was yeah, so she is so eligible like damn i'm stoked for her i i and so uh we're just gonna say it now she's the say next now. bachelorette she's the next bachelorette yeah. and she's gonna be a queen and i cannot i'm i'm excited to watch her season i'm yeah, me so too. excited to watch her season because me she's too. a beautiful human she's extremely emotionally intelligent and she's fun so yeah fuck yeah let's go I'm down. Yeah. She, she, I'm, I'm really excited to see how she handles conflict. Oh my God. She's going to give us the closest thing. So interesting. Cause it's going to be through like the bachelor editing lens, but she's going to give us the conscious relationship conversations that we've been yearning for. Oh yes, she will. She will. She will. Yeah. It's going to be an amazing season. I'm excited. Yeah. She's going to call out so much bullshit too. Fuck yeah. yeah. Let's go charity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So women tell all women tell all this honestly like this show was a headache to me yeah yeah can i um i here's what i put i said it felt like early 2000 reality tv with everyone shouting shit mm, yes yes it really did it was like jerry springer and if i'm being totally honest like okay the girls and how they ta like handled the beef that they had within the house. I got it. I understood. Were like were they composed and organized as a group so that we could hear everything that was going on? They were not. But I I understood. I understood them airing out all the stuff that they needed to air out. I do think generally it was overall like a good group of women. Um, With a few uh, firecrackers, a couple firecrackers, but nothing like. Nothing over the top like we've seen in other seasons in the past. Um, so it just, like, I guess what I'm trying to say, as boring as it sounds, is it was what it was between the girls. They, yeah. they they got their shit out. I was kind of happy a little bit for, like, justice for Christina 
just a, just a smidge. I really do think that they went too hard in the paint with making the assumptions of, of why Christina would say the things that she said. Cause I really do think that she was just like in her feels and like she's outspoken and she's kind of just like a Southern, like she's a smart woman, but also kind of a ding dong. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and even like how she handled it, she got called out. She, first of all, she was quiet the whole time. Everyone's putting her on blast. She's saying nothing. Other girls are like trying to speak up for her. One, I guess at least one girl who I was like, who are you? Um, and then when, when Christina does get a chance to speak, she really is just listening that whole time. She's not even making crazy faces. She's not even like reacting. She, I really feel like she's just taking it in. And then when she spoke, she was like, you know what? Hearing some of this stuff, I, like it was uncomfortable. Glad to hear it. I'm really trying to not do some of these things. I understood. I was like, that's not even like a, and I'm sure someone helped her be a little prepared yeah. for this moment. But like, I just, I, I, I just felt like, yeah, I think that she's a human being. I don't think that she's like a narcissist. I don't think that she's like an egomaniac. Like, I don't think that she's so self-centered. She can't even see. I think that you guys were all crazy mad about something and she's not that bad period. Yeah. Yeah. I think she just said some shit in a shitty timing way. And yeah, she did remind people of her one-to-one. -one, and I think that really was her own insecurity and how she was trying to manage it. Um, yeah. But people were, instead of being like, wow, you're really insecure and talking about your one-on-one -on -one a lot to try and comfort yourself. They're like, wow, you're egotistical and all about you, huh? And it's yeah, like, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Those are different and things. So, very different things. And they're going to be articulated in very different ways. And so, you know, I just think that um, there's, again, a lack of education on like hearing, like listening to someone talk and making a, an educated decision on like, is this stemming from a place of insecurity or is this stemming from a place of like, you know, contempt. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. All right. Yep. Um, what else was brought? Oh, the Anastasia, the Stas the Stasi drama was wild. I was like, what? Yeah. Well, yeah. it was kind of like difficult to know who, like who to believe. Like, like they were saying like, I kind of believe that. She said, she's like, I got the receipts, bitch. Yeah. I I'm know. Like, I want to show me the receipts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was always something. There was always something a little bit about Anastasia that I just didn't trust. Like, I just, Same. but uh, honestly, we'll never know. And it doesn't honestly, matter after, after this day. I truly will never care. I don't really care. Yeah, at all. No. I just, I think the reason people are so fired up about it is like it's a shitty thing to do to go on a show to gain clout for your business and claiming to be there for the right reasons. And I understand why they're so fired up about it, but totally. I mean, she didn't win. She didn't make it very far. So like who really cares? In the yeah, end? Now if she made it shit. to final three and that was the truth. That was the situation we need to talk. <laughs> right, 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 right. Of course. Yeah. Um, Jess got her airtime. There were a couple people that were in the hot seat. We had Jess, we had Greer who they were, you know, they were addressing the, her defending blackface online which she handled and it, like it just it felt very pr rep to me and like just whatever i i was like whatever i guess we're doing this here on this stage okay um we had jess we had greer we had cat and we had charity cats yeah did nothing for me i was happy for jess i was proud of jess same. You know? Um, yeah. I was proud of Jess. I feel like Jess, like, I, I, I believed her when she said she was like, I kind of fell in love with myself in this process. And I was like, oh, my God, girl, you needed that. Mm -hmm. You needed that. Yeah. I mean, she – and I like that she stood up for the for what she wanted at the end of it anyway. She was like, I'm not wrong for wanting what I wanted. I wanted – like it made sense to me to want a one-on-one -on -one with this guy that I'd been building a connection with. Mm -hmm. And like, I fucking agree. I get that. Totally. And I love that she was able to articulate to him, like, you know, what I saw in like watching it back 
with you being so emotional when I'm driving away, that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to know that you cared. Um, but instead Zach was so hyper-focused on like, it's not about a one-on-one where of course she felt misunderstood. Cause it's like, you're not hearing me. You're not, you're focusing, he's focusing on, let me tell you why a one-on-one's not important instead of how it's making her feel. And so I get, and, and Zach owned it. He was like, I honestly don't know how, why I wasn't able to do that. And the second you drove away, it hit me like a truck and the end. Here we are. Um, yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, cat. my favorite part. Oh, go ahead. We're talking about cat. Yeah. Well, what was, what was your favorite part? Nothing. I don't have anything no, I don't to, have to say, say about, about cat. cat. Yeah, me neither. Um, it, uh, my favorite memorable. part was the bloopers where he was like mold wine versus mold wine. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. <gasps> Girl, I was dying. It was like, what oh a little my dummy. god, you're. Yeah, exactly. It was like, oh my god, dude. I loved yeah. when he was like, he was like mold, mold wine, which it sounds disgusting, but it's actually pretty good, delicious huh. mold wine. <laughs> And he yeah. told her that and she didn't say anything. Like if I was the girl on the date, I would have been like, you mean mold wine? <laughs> like M U L L yeah, but- I would have had I would have had that whole conversation with him, which would have been fucking maybe, hilarious. Maybe my hearing's just bad, but I think that I probably would have had a hard time even like knowing the difference. Discerning the difference. Been like, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, you said mold wine. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. But when you know. he's like, it sounds gross, like that's when I was like, what do you mean it sounds gross? Why does yeah, mold wine sound gross? Sounds awesome. Yeah. I would have been like, what? And that's where yeah. I think the mold versus mold would have come in. Mm. Um, but I thought that that was like the best blooper I've ever seen on this show. And Zach is hilarious. Like the way he was like, wait, what? <laughs> The bloopers in general were hilarious when they showed Mercedes blowing a snot rocket. Yeah. Oh I was God. like, I'm obsessed with her. Who'd she say? <gasps> she had to do like a farmer's, a farmer's shoot or something. Oh, I missed it. Anyway, it was, that. she just like, she had a bug in it. She found a bug in her nose. A bug flew up her nose while she was being interviewed, <laughs> probably on like a group date or something. And she was like, hold on. I need to do like a, like a farmer's blow, a farmer's blow. And I was like, oh my God, she's about to do this on camera right now. And watching her react to it, she was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it was hilarious. We're here for it. Loved it. Yeah. yeah. And the end. Um, uh, so. Uh, what I, the thing that bothered me about Zach, Zach bothered me on the women tell, if I'm honest. Tell me. Uh, yeah. In the moments that he was just like being like made fun of and he was just like taking the shit. Great. Seemed like a good sport, laughing at himself, not taking it too seriously. Tra-la-la-la. Anytime he was confronted by any of the women about serious questions, he just gave the nothingness of answers. Mm. Period. He just, he said nothing of substance. It was so diplomatic. And so it was like watching a politician not speaking on anything, but like trying yeah. to make a point. And then people are like, oh, yeah, of course. You know, it's like, <laughs> what did he just say? And some might mm. ask, Brenna, what are you saying right now? To that point, I'd say, grow up and figure it out. <laughs> but I do, I just feel like, I just feel I like he wasn't. get that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, I just felt like he didn't really, yeah, like, like, sort of like what he was doing with Charity um, when he broke up with her where he like gave her some bullshit and she was like, what does that mean? I felt like he was giving all of the women bullshit because I think he's nervous, which I understand I would be too. I don't know how I would have handled this. So I will humble myself, but like, he just like said nothing for the sake of saving face. And that's really just what it felt like. Yeah. Dude, I hear you on how it felt diplomatic. I get that. And I feel like it's, they're trained. Like they have a PR person who like trains them how to respond. Same thing. I agree with the Greer thing. I think, I think the most human moment Greer had was when she was like, I feel really nervous to talk about this right now. Cause I think that's true. And I think she was trying to make it through, but like, you know, with a really uncomfortable topic to share on national television and be called out. And like, I think she did the best that she could. And honestly, like, 
it was a she said all the right things and like did not hide around from yeah it, 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 no she, she did and that. yeah well uh, before we move on i am glad that they had i'm glad that they gave credit to and highlighted and gave a microphone to the black educator that helped i guess met with greer and helped like facilitate Same. some of this learning because like yeah. she clearly is the person to like like listen to like I, I obviously white people need to really fall the fuck back when when it comes to like stuff about racism they need to like re we we i included need to learn need to do a way better job of just fucking figuring it out bro and like and listening this person yeah. obviously I, i'm i'm failing to remember her name but she was awesome she clearly was like this is how we get better from these situations and i was like yes let's let's listen to the professional here okay um but any hoosers yeah. where were we I going i also love genevieve pointing it out with yeah. the well just to kind of stay on this topic for another minute i yeah. love that genevieve was like you know basically trying to tell stassi like would you have said the same thing if that was a white girl that was like yeah. i don't want to fight yeah. with you right now because yeah, she Kylie it. looked sweet as a little button. She just felt awkward being like, hey. And it's like these microaggressions does, against mm -hmm. the people in the BIPOC community. It's really, un. it's not okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love no, that Genevieve she, was she just a her fucking her badass bitch being like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Um, right. So get and this it, professor, Thank this you professor, for leading example. This professor later on was like, that's yeah. that's how we deal with this so it was really great to be able to like call back to that which was obviously not part of the greer discussion yeah. so it was such a beautiful organic wasn't on um, the script example. yeah wasn't on the yeah. script i mean obviously anastasia should not have done that and we we were talking about that when the when that ep the Bahama episode did. came live and but like i like that she was able to, to to call back to it and be like calling it what it is calling it racism calling it a microaggression if it is is like how we address these moments and like yeah. learn from it, move on, do differently. Point blank period. Yeah. Charity. So I think Zach is, yeah, going, oh, are we going to charity? I was going to go back to Zach yeah. being a politician. Yeah, please. Yeah. Zach is just like, I think he's doing the best he can. I also am like, now that they're done filming, he's probably witnessing a bunch of the backlash he's getting because people on the internet love to be trolls and they love to be really asshole -ish tro trolls. And so there's a part of me that thinks he might be hiding behind the political thing as like a reprieve from like trying to save, yes, save face, but also like not have for him to have to vulnerably like deal with any of the backlash. And I... Like, mm. is it the right way to handle it? Maybe so, maybe not. But yeah, I, to say. I understand if I I understand why if that is something that's kind of going on for him, why he would hide behind such polit like you know bullshit answers because it's easier to like let me stay safe and give you some political answer because I'm feeling overwhelmed by the amount of trolls I have on the gram right now or wherever it is, um, you know and. Yeah. Again, does it excuse it? Not necessarily, but I understand it. Yeah, totally. And it's a huge assumption totally. I'm making, but that's mm -hmm. that's kind of where my brain goes. No, I get you. So, all right, what are we ditching? Mm, you know what we're ditching? A recycling what? of breakup lines on national television when people are going to see them. Do better. Do better. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Be honest. Yeah. Like, I would rather have someone in my life be like, look, you're a cool chick. It's not going to work out because you like black. I just don't feel it. That's just I, not like, there's something to me. Right. Yeah. I just don't feel it. Anything. Like, you say the it's not aligned. Polish. We have, like, I, yeah. I mean, whatever it is. Um, yeah. yeah. But I definitely agree. Like, just be real. Just be real. Just be like, look, I'm not feeling it. It's not aligned. We have different values. It's not clicking, you know, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, don't don't say some bullshit answer to try and, you know, it's not you, it's me type bullshit. It's like, right, mm. right, right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What are you ditching? Um, let's see. What am I ditching? Um, 
I am ditching the need to, or the temptation to play the cool chick. Mm. You know, this is hearkening back to Gabby, how Gabby was feeling in her head a little bit about like, oh my yeah. God, you're going on. And instead of her trying to play it cool and confident, she just owned that with him and was like, there's part of me freaking out because I was the first one. And oh my God, are you going to forget about me? And I'm not going to see you for a whole week. Right. And that sucks. Right. And I appreciated that honesty. And I truly think that, um, you know, when we're building relationships, obviously this is a little bit of a different situation that is not fully grounded in reality. Um, despite it being called reality television, it'll be that one, Batman. But, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I think within, <laughs> within this scenario, it's totally understandable. She's feeling that way. And I think it's also really what allows your partner to be able to learn how to comfort you, learn what triggers you so that you can develop the emotional intimacy and safety in your relationship instead of just always being unbothered by everything. It's not a realistic right. precedent to set. So, yeah. I'm telling the you, end, that's today, what we're ditching. You are, you are dropping factuals, factual statements left and right. Sprinkle, 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 yeah. bitch. Sprinkle, All right. sprinkle, sprinkle, Guys, bitch. Guys, if you liked our show, yeah, if you liked our show, leave us a rating and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Uh, if you have a question you want us to answer, head to our website, ditchthescriptpod.com. And if you want to apply for a free mini sesh with us, ditchthescriptpod.com slash podcast. And don't forget to follow us on the gram and TikTok at ditchthescriptpod. And that's it. We love you long time. And that's peace it. out. Bye. That's it. <laughs>